Hey, we got Drew's views here, and I'm back for a little Car Tuesday reaction. Legend of Korra, book four. And I'm just cruising right along to the finish line here of Legend of Korra in general. Three episodes left, book four, chapter 11 today. Then uh, two more, I guess. So everything's uh, lining up, everything's getting in order for the big finale conclusion showdown with Kuvira and her fascist, you know, takeover, Earth Empire. Uh, you know, some of the themes in the show more prevalent than ever, you know, at least here in the States. Um, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have any <laughs> avatar to come in and fix things. But, you know, I won't get into all that. But with the show here, like I said, the the sides are getting evened up again uh, with the Operation Beifong last time. Uh, Toph and... Uh, her family essentially with with the, the very annoying Bolin in tow rescued the rest of them they also got Julie back on the good side she always was on the good side like like I had suspected she was uh, trying to be an undercover agent in Kuvira's operation you know and uh, Kuvira was evidently a little too trusting of her as I noted um, and she was trying to sabotage the super weapon she was caught however but then yeah they got her um, back so now they're all going to Republic City to reunite with Team Avatar and all the airbenders and everyone I'm assuming but Julie also had said that Kuvira is planning to attack in I don't know two months or something like that 30 days there was some amount now I don't remember what it was but I also had thought with my recap from last episode that since Kuvira knows Julie has escaped now she should probably change up her plans that Julie knew about, right, and attack at a different time, maybe sooner, to get the jump, even though the weapon, I guess, well, I guess the weapon is complete. It did work, you know. Batar was doing the weapons test and then kind of got pushed out of the way because his sister was there rescuing Julie. So um, I don't know if there's going to be trouble in paradise between those two as well, but I think Kuvir probably would, would forgive him on that one, but we'll see you know she's probably gonna be pretty upset about what what just happened but i guess the weapon does work um and so that's bad <laughs> and yeah this episode is called kuvir's gambit so maybe that does have something to do with her switching up her plans uh we'll have to see also last time cora tried to get the spirits back involved and they refused her so she needs another plan to get them interested in helping out um or i don't know what the plot line with that's gonna be but you know the show in general especially since season two the end of it with the portals being opened and all that is, has a lot to do with the spirit human harmony so we'll see how that plot line gets resolved here at the end of the series but yeah i mean i'm ready to, to jump right into this one gotta see what goes down All right, so well, I'm sure they do survive this with two episodes left, Team Avatar and uh, the Bayfongs and everyone, or whatever their name is. <laughs> uh, you know, let's see his family. It, I don't know how, like, they. it looks like that would have destroyed them. I don't know, maybe Korra is able to do some Avatar business to, like, give them, like, a shielding bubble or something. But, yeah, I guess that would be the impetus for Batar Jr. to go back to his family side, knowing what... I mean, it was predictable what would happen when she finds out. Like, she, clearly, she's very ruthless. Only cares about maintaining the ultimate control for her new empire. We did see... I had been wondering if she was just entirely using Batar Jr. because of who he is. And I guess he's a good scientist, too. And, like, he helped create that or did create that uh, thing that Julie didn't even know about, which was really cool, the super weapon. But yeah, at the beginning of the episode, it did seem like, you know, they were hugging and like she, she did it, like the look on her face did look like she was kind of happy, satisfied, whatever. So I think she did have some feelings for him, but, or does have some feelings for him, but clearly, no, I don't think there's any one person alive that would, you know, have, make her stop this. So yeah, we'll see if, um, 
I guess he gets forgiven by the family. I don't think he really deserves it, but you know, I'm sure they'll probably go somewhere that direction, but interested again to see how they survive that. Um, yeah, but with the weapon itself, so, well, first of all, with the Cuvier's Gambit, she did change up the plans a week earlier or whatnot. That was, you know, she's getting it back together after the Julie debacle with the good plans. Yeah, that super weapon or whatever it's called, the mech. Really cool animated animation style is really dope. Just the way she controls it from the inside with her metal bending is really cool. And the super weapon is, you know, pretty unstoppable. I think it maybe could still work like what I was hypothesizing during the episode. Like if another one of the metal benders gets in there and they'd be able to take control of it or something. Maybe it'll maybe it'll both be in there doing it. It'll be like a stop hitting yourself <laughs> sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that would be interesting. I guess Kuvir is probably going to take the city at the beginning of the next time here. We'll see how quickly, you know, Team Avatar and the rest, uh, they're revealed to be alive or whatever, you know, whatever happens. I guess, you know, Lynn is going there right now to check on the survivors. So, yeah. And then I don't know if obviously what happened was predictable and that, that Kuvir was just going to get their location and, and uh, shoot them down. But if that wasn't the case, like, was Korra really going to just, like, keep Batar as some kind of hostage forever? Like, how would that work exactly? I don't know. But nice to see uh, General Iroh again, even though he didn't uh, get much to do there. The army basically had to stand down. I guess, is he the Fire Lord's son? Because he's a grandson of Zuko, right? Maybe Zuko didn't have any sons himself. I don't know if if the Fire Lord's his only child in general, but I'm thinking if he would have had a son himself, he probably would have named the son Iroh rather than having a grandson, but I don't know if we'll see him again. Maybe in the next two episodes, I'll be back. Uh, and then with the President Raiko and everything, like this is like, like one of the only episodes where him and Korra were kind of on the same page and not, when it's the ultimate emergency, but not that it really mattered, I guess. Although of course they didn't fill him in on, the, uh, on their plan to uh, snatch Batar. Yeah, what else will happen? I mean, I guess they, I guess they got this, the whole city evacuated. It's a little unrealistic, I guess. Well, whatever. I mean, Prince Louis did his thing there, telling them all, you know, and seeing all the lights switch off is a little, a little silly, but good to see him, you know, taking some control as a leader. Um, yeah, so I don't exactly know. With two episodes left, I assume, I don't know if it's gonna be a thing where Kuvir, yeah, takes the city and then the the good guys are on the run a little bit and they have to come back and take her out or it's just gonna all happen starting next time I th do you think the spirits will have to be involved in some way or the power of the avatar is gonna have to be involved in some way with this as well but yeah we'll see i mean i'm, I'm just uh, excited for the conclusion for the penultimate episode next time do join me back for that next card tuesday do subscribe if you're not already you know, leave some comments, get conversation going. And yeah, until next time, I'm going to be up out of here. Peace. I have no choice.